What is going on guys? It is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to fix network errors and no internet on your PlayStation 5 console. Now there are a lot of different reasons why we might be getting network errors on our PlayStation 5. It could be the PlayStation 5 itself, it could be the PlayStation Network or Sony, and it could be our own internet. And these issues can appear in a lot of different ways. You can get dropped connections, slow connections, you may experience games or certain pages not loading, along with some of the error codes you see on the screen right now. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to stop those drop connections and how to fix network errors. And we're going to start by checking the status of our PlayStation's connection to the internet and to the PlayStation network. So to do that, head up here to settings. The first option here is network, select that. And then over here on the right, make sure that everything here says connected or signed in. I'm connected wirelessly to my router and you can see it is connected here. The internet connection is also good and I am signed in to the PlayStation network. So just to confirm these settings, I do like to run a quick internet connection test so select that option here and it'll go through make sure that we are actually connected to the internet it'll make sure everything's working with the router and with the PlayStation Network and as you can see here everything is working just fine for me now I'm having no issues with my internet right now so everything is going to come back as connected and signed in but for you you'll most likely see a message that says failed to connect uh, Wi-Fi disconnected PlayStation Network failed to sign in something along those lines so just keep in mind that it will look different because I'm not having any connection issues right now all right so I'm going to back out of here and like I mentioned earlier, there are three different reasons why our internet might not be working. The first is the PlayStation 5 console itself, the second is our own network, and the third is the PlayStation Network. So I'm going to check the PlayStation Network status first, and you can do that by going down here to View PlayStation Network Status. It'll you know, load up a web page here that goes directly to the PlayStation Network. Now if you tried to load this page and it wouldn't for you or give you an error message, then it's most likely your internet that's the problem. But if you were able to load this page, we can view the status of the PlayStation PlayStation Network. So if it has orange or red on any of these icons right here, that means the issue you're experiencing is not with your console or with your internet, but with the PlayStation Network itself. So this can happen a lot. A lot of people use the PlayStation Network if a new game releases, or there are just a lot of people online, the network can go down, or sometimes it will be down for maintenance or for repairs. So you can view that here, and if it says anything other than green, that means it is the PlayStation Network that is down. So if that is the case, you essentially just have to weather the storm. There's not really much you can do on your end, you just have to wait for Sony to fix the issue with the PlayStation Network. It can take anywhere from a couple minutes to up to an hour, but if it is showing all green and you are able to connect to the PlayStation Network, then the issue is with your PS5 or with your network. So the first way to resolve pretty much any issue is to simply restart the PlayStation 5. Sometimes connections will time out or certain settings need to be reconfigured, and who knows the PlayStation 5 more than the PlayStation 5 itself. So if we restart it, it will reconfigure all those settings automatically upon restart. So so just press the PlayStation button, head over here to power, and then select the option restart PlayStation 5. It'll just restart the console and you can sign back in and once again view your connection status by heading back here to the network settings. Now if that didn't work, I would recommend trying a wired connection to your PlayStation 5. If your PlayStation 5 is a distance away from your router in another room or downstairs or there are obstructions in the way, for example a TV cabinet or a piece of furniture, it can have trouble connecting to your router. So the best way way to alleviate that issue is to just use a wired connection. Now obviously if your router is a distance away it might be more difficult to get a wire all the way from your router to your PlayStation 5 but if it is possible to run it along the floor or to use wall outlets for your internet try that and try to connect your PlayStation 5 via an ethernet cable. If you have the ability to use an ethernet cable all you need to do is plug one end into your PlayStation 5 and then the other end into your Wi-Fi router. Most likely your router will have a row of yellow ethernet ports just plug it into any one of those unless it is marked for something specific and then once you've plugged it in we can configure it by going here to network settings head down here to set up internet connection and then it should show up here in networks found as set up wired lan select that and then select the option connect and it should say connected here and if we go back to our connection status it should show connected to the wired lan to the internet and to the playstation network now if we are unable to use a wired connection we can configure our wireless settings so that we can improve our connection so to do that, head over here to settings, go to set up internet connection, and then select the Wi-Fi network that you are connected to and press the options button. We're going to configure some advanced settings, but first make sure that you have the correct Wi-Fi frequency band set. Usually the PlayStation 5 does a pretty good job of connecting automatically if we have it set to automatic. However, it can sometimes help to manually set these settings here instead. So if you are close to your Wi-Fi router, say in the same room or about a room away, try to use the 5G connection. This frequency 
frequency provides faster speeds, but isn't as good at traveling through solid objects or greater distances. So if you're close to your router, then select this option. If you are more than a room away or upstairs or downstairs from your router, select the 2.4G option. This can travel farther, but has slower speeds. Since I'm closer to my Wi-Fi router, I'm going to select the 5G option. It'll let you know that you'll have to disconnect from the Wi-Fi and it'll reconnect automatically. Select OK, and it will connect to the internet. If you are not able to connect to your router after selecting this setting, it could be because your router does not have a 5G or 2.4G option, so make sure that your router has both of these frequencies before you try either one. Most modern routers do have both 2.4 and 5G, so you should be fine selecting whichever one suits your situation best. If that didn't work, we can move on to some more advanced settings here. Once again, we're going to select options here, and this time we're going to select advanced settings. And in here, we are going to configure the DNS settings. It's by default set to automatic, but if we set it to manual, we can configure it so that we can get a better connection. DNS is essentially the translation of web addresses, for example, google.com, to number addresses that are commonly used on the internet. If you have a really good DNS server, which is what we're going to set here, then you can have faster connections. By default, the PlayStation 5 uses automatic, but we can get better results by setting our own DNS servers for our internet connection. So here as primary, I almost always select Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. Feel free to use whichever server you want to. You can look them up online. Usually there are better servers in different regions of the world, but here in the USA, 8.8.8.8 is the best server, at least in my experience. So I'm going to select done here. And then as your secondary, you can either use Google's secondary, which is 8.8.4.4, or you can select a different DNS company. So I have Cloudfares 1.1.1.1 since I have pretty good results with theirs, so I'm going to just confirm that. Once again, you can do your own research to find a DNS server that best suits your location, but I'd recommend these two for your primary and secondary. So with just these set, we can select OK. It will once again reconnect to the access point, and then it will connect to the internet, and we have connected here. We can go back and check our status, and for me, once again, it has connected, connected, and signed in. Now that pretty much does it for what we can do on the PlayStation 5 itself. If you have configured all of these settings and it is still giving you network connection issues, it is most likely an issue with your network and not with the PlayStation 5 console. So from here, we're going to have to configure our network settings. So the way we change settings on our network is through our router. You may also have a modem slash router combo. Either way, it's going to be our default gateway, which we are going to be accessing to change the settings for our network. To view the default gateway address, you can go to the network settings on your PlayStation 5 and then select view connection status and then go down and view the default gateway IP address. I'd recommend writing it down because we are going to need it in just a second here. Once you have your default gateway, go to a web browser on your phone or computer and type it into the search bar. After you press enter, it should take you to a page similar to this where it'll ask you to log in with a username and password. If you never changed the default settings on your router, you can usually view the default username and password on your router. It's either going to be on the bottom on a sticker or on the side somewhere. You can also check online. There are a lot of websites that have lists of the default usernames and passwords for your Wi-Fi router. So just type in the model number and then search online. Either way, once you have that username and password, and you've signed in, you should see a screen similar to this. Now this is the options screen for an Asus router. However, if you have a Netgear or a Motorola router, it is going to look different. However, a lot of the menus you'll see and the settings will change are going to be identical. So on my router, if I just click on the firmware version listed here, it'll take me to a menu where I can check for updates. And you can see that I actually do have an update here. So I will install that. And usually that will restart the router. So make sure that everyone else on your network knows the internet will be down for a couple minutes while the router updates. Make sure you do not unplug your router. Make sure there is no power loss to the router because if there is during the firmware update, it can cause catastrophic issues for your router. Once that update has installed and your router has restarted, it'll most likely ask you to sign back in. And then once you have, make sure everything looks good here and then back on your PlayStation 5. Once again, check to see if your network is connected. If not, then try disconnecting and reconnecting to the network to make sure those
those settings are actually applied on your console. Now, if the firmware update did not work or there was no firmware update for your router, we can attempt to restart it to resolve the issue. So back on that router setup screen, there should be an option to reboot it from the actual settings. So for me, it's gonna be this option right here. I just click on reboot and it'll take a couple seconds. It'll basically take the internet down and bring it back up. If you do not have a reboot option in here on the actual router itself, there might be a restart button. Make sure you don't press a reset button if there is one. Most of those are in a little hole that you have to press with like a paper clip or something. But if it is an actual button you can press, make sure not to press it because that will wipe the router's settings and you will have to configure it again as if you have a new network. If there is no restart button on your router, you can do it the old fashioned way and unplug the router and plug it back in again. This will force a power off and restart. The internet will go down and your router will turn off and turn back on again. Once again, on your PlayStation 5, disconnect and reconnect to the internet to make sure those settings are applied, and you should see if it is connected here. All right, so this next fix has a little bit to do with the PlayStation 5 and a little bit to do with our network, and that is creating a static IP address for our console. Now, let me warn you before starting this method that it is a little bit more time-consuming and complicated, and there is a higher potential to mess up your network when setting a static IP address, so just keep that in mind. If you want to skip ahead to the final fix, the timestamp is right here. Just keep in mind that this is a lot of information and it is the most time consuming fix of them all. So to start setting up our static IP address, we have to head back over to the PlayStation 5, back to network settings and then advanced settings. And in the same menu here, we can change the IP address settings. Now, normally this doesn't usually do much to improve the speed or the connection, but if we have a router with some weird settings on it, then sometimes changing the IP address settings will help. So by default, the IP address settings are set to automatic. We can select the option here and change it to manual. And in here, you'll notice I already have my settings configured, but for you, you will see 0.0.0.0. And what you're gonna put in here depends on your Wi-Fi settings. So for subnet mask and default gateway, these are going to be essentially the kind of network address you have for your network, the router's network address. And then the top option here is a custom IP address we're going to set for the PlayStation 5. So to view what we should put for the subnet mask and default gateway, we can go back here, back to our connection status, and if we select view connection status, we can see what our subnet mask and default gateway should be. These settings we are not going to change because these are the settings that are given to us from our Wi-Fi router. So make sure to write these two numbers down right here. Subnet mask is almost always going to be 255.255.255.0, but the default gateway is going to depend on your router. Most likely it's going to be 192.168. something. something. In my case, it is.50.1. To set the IPv4 address, we're going to have to access our router's settings. So, once again, like we did before, just type in the default gateway, log in with your username and password. And again, I'm using an Asus router, so the settings you see here will most likely look different on your router. But you'll notice here on the side, I have advanced settings, and in advanced settings, I have the option LAN. If I click on that, it takes me to this tab here where I have a few options. Across the top, you'll notice a few extra menus, and one of them is DHCP. I'm going to click on that, and it allows me to configure my DHCP settings. So no matter what kind of router you have, you should have DHCP settings in it. So get to those. It's either going to be in some kind of administrative settings, LAN settings, something along those lines. It'll be up to you to find them because each router is different. But once you have located the DHCP settings, scroll down, and there should be an option to add a static or permanent IP address. Essentially, your router rotates addresses for your different devices and changes them on a regular basis. Usually all these devices automatically update their address when the router updates it for them, but occasionally there can be issues with these settings, and updating them here on the router and on the PlayStation 5 makes it so that we can avoid those connection issues. So, for me, I have an option to add an IP address, so it gives me a drop-down of all the devices connected to my network. Now, my router sorts devices by MAC address and brand name, and most likely your router will at least sort by MAC address as well. So, in order to view the MAC address for our PlayStation 5 console, once again back here in the settings menu, we can select View Connection status and then if we go down here you'll see two options for our MAC address one for a wired connection and then one for a wireless so whichever way you are connected choose the MAC address for that so I am connected using a cable so I'm going to use that MAC address and look for it here in my list and I'm going to click on it here and it is going to give me a few different options which I can fill in and the first one here is for an IP address your first three numbers are going to match what you wrote down for the default gateway so in my case it is 192 
0.2.168.50. And then for the last number here, it's going to be anything between 1 and 255. So my router usually assigns addresses up to 30. So anything above that is usually not being used, but your router might be different. So try to use a number that's not already being used. Usually the router will unassign the number if you choose one that's already being used, but try to use one that's not in use by another device. You can usually view the IP addresses that are being used by going either to DHCP and viewing the devices or select an option that says connected devices. Either way, if you choose a higher number in the hundreds or 200s before 255, you should be good. For my network though, I'm going to select 35 as my IP address and you can also select a DNS server here. I'm just going to keep it with 8.8.8.8 and you can name the option here. So I'm just going to name it something I can easily remember, which is PS5. Lastly, select the add button and that will add the static IP address to your router. So back on the PlayStation 5, make sure you have the subnet mask and default gateway options filled in. And then for the IPv4 address, fill it in with whatever you set as your IPv4 on the Wi-Fi router. So in my case, it is 192.168.50.35. Once you've configured those settings, you can press OK. And if you configured everything correctly, it will connect to the access point and it will connect to the internet. All right, so that pretty much does it for everything we can do on our PlayStation 5. We can now go back here. Once again, check the connection status. And if it says connected, connected, and signed in, you are all good to go. And the last thing I want to mention is make sure that there are no major obstructions between the PlayStation 5 and your Wi-Fi router. So I know a lot of people who keep their router in a closet or in an attic somewhere out of the way, um, just because it's hard to find a place to put your Wi-Fi router. It's kind of ugly, and it just sort of sits there. But try to keep it out of the way of obstructions. Try not to put it behind too many things or too many rooms away from where the PlayStation 5 is. Same thing goes with the PlayStation PlayStation 5, make sure it's not behind any pieces of furniture or a long distance away from the router. Make sure it is as unobstructed as possible from the router connection, especially if you're doing it wirelessly. Beyond that though, that is pretty much all you can do on your PlayStation 5 and with your network to configure settings to get it to connect. If you are still experiencing network issues on your console, it is most likely PlayStation network related. Sometimes they can still have issues with their service, even if it is not reported on the website. So give it some time. It could also be your internet service provider that has an outage. Oftentimes the PlayStation will still connect to the router and the router will still show as connected and no issues even if there is an outage from your ISP. So best way to do that is to go to your ISP's website or through their mobile app and see if there are any outages through them. Beyond that though that is pretty much it. Hopefully your issue was resolved with this tutorial. If it was be sure to leave a like down below. If you have any questions about this process leave those in the comments. I will respond to those as quickly as possible. If you have any other issues on your PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox, anything like that, leave it down below and I'll try to resolve your issue through a video or through a comment. Other than that, I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.